This is part 34 as far as our lecture series is concerned. In this part, we will try to understand as to procedure regarding trial as far as the criminal procedure code is concerned. Before we start discussing with the trial, it is necessary for us to understand what do you mean by trial. And then when we refer to section 2, which is a defining section, you come across section 2G, which defines what do you mean by an inquiry, which says, inquiry means every inquiry other than a trial conducted under this code by a magistrate or court. So there is no definition of trial, but there is a definition of inquiry and inquiry means every inquiry other than a trial conducted under this code. So this is the time that you want to understand what do you mean by trial. We have to go through various trials which are dealt by the provisions of the criminal procedure code. Now this trial will entirely depend upon the nature of the case whether it is a summons case or whether it is a warrant case. And then to understand the meaning of what do you mean by summons case, you have to read section 2W of the criminal, pro criminal procedure code which says summons case means a case relating to an offense not being a warrant case. So that is the definition given as far as the summons case is concerned. Now in order to understand this, to the, the what do you mean by someone's case you must know what do you mean by warrant case and warrant case is defined as far as section 2 x of the criminal procedure code is concerned which says warrant case means a case relating to an offense punishable with death imprisonment for life or imprisonment for a term exceeding two years in other words if the nature of the case is such for which punishment is up to two years, that is what is known as a summons case. And if the nature of the case is relating to an offense for which punishment exceeds, it exceeds two years, that is what is known as warrant case. Now, if it is a warrant case, what is the procedure that has to be followed by the court of law will entirely depend upon the nature of the case is tribal by which court and in order to know this you have to refer, refer to the last vertical column of the first schedule of the criminal procedure court which tells you by what court the, it is tribal whether it is tribal by the court of session or whether it is tribal by court of magistrate accordingly now there are cases which are tribal only by the court of session and hence this is to be correlated with what power of the court and hence I mean when we were dealing if you remember right from section 6 up to section 25a and then right from section 26 up to section 35 of the criminal procedure code we dealt with various courts and offices and their powers as far as criminal procedure code is concerned. So now if the trial is before a court of session what is the procedure that is required to be followed with which we shall be dealing right from section 225 up to section 237 of the criminal procedure code. This, with this now, when it is a trial of a warrant case, the magistrate will follow the procedure which is laid down right from section 238 up to section 250 and by reading this chapter we will come across procedure with respect to two trials, namely trial of a warrant case which is instituted on police report and trial of a warrant case which is instituted otherwise than on police report. With this now if the nature of the offence is such where the punishment is up to two years only that is what is known as summons case for which court will follow the procedure which is laid down right from section 251 up to section 259 and in case of a uh, summons case there is also the procedure which is laid down right from say, right from section 260 up to section 265 which deals with what do you mean by summary trial with which we shall we shall be dealing during course of our lectures now this is also the time for me to draw your attention 
that if you read section 474 of the criminal procedure code there is a provision that there can be a trial by high court also and if there is a trial by the high court no separate procedure has been laid down anywhere in the criminal procedure code but if you just have, uh, just read section uh, refer to section uh, 474 of the criminal procedure code you will come to know that high court will fall in case when it is a trial before high court High court will follow the procedure as far as the trial before a court of session is concerned that is made very clear as far as section 470, 474 of the criminal procedure code is concerned. So now if you read section 474 which says trial before, before high courts it says when an offense is tried by high court otherwise that under section 407 it shall in all in, in the trial of the offense observe same procedure as a court of session would observe if it were trying the case so to know the procedure that can be followed by the high court as far as the trial before high court is concerned you must know the procedure as far as trial before a court of session is concerned for which you have to refer to right from section 225 up to section 237 of the uh, criminal procedure code and here now you can understand meaning of the term inquiry and what is an inquiry inquiry means every inquiry under this code other than a trial now during course of time when we will deal with this uh, a trial object of the trial is to record the evidence in order to find out guilt or innocence of an accused person in other words trial is always conducted to find out whether the person is liable or person is not liable. In other words, trial always results into conviction or an acquittal. So in a case, there is, I mean, we shall be dealing, there is a recording of evidence, no doubt about it. But the object, this object of recording of the evidence is to find out whether person is a person has committed an offense or guilt of the person is not proved beyond reasonable, reasonable doubt. In other words now, when there is a recording of the evidence and the, this recording of the evidence is not with the object of finding out guilt or innocence of an accused person, but it is for something other than that, then that is exactly what do you mean by an inquiry as per the provisions of the criminal procedure code. Up to this time, we dealt with many, I mean, inquiries. For example, when the matter goes to the magistrate as far as section 125 of the criminal procedure code is concerned regarding maintenance, the here, the person against whom you make an application is not convicted or acquitted by the court of law. Mere direction is given by the court of law. Court passes an order asking him to pay maintenance accordingly. So this is an inquiry. If you read right from section 106 up to 124, which deals with security for keeping the peace and good behavior, this is also, this, the court will conduct an inquiry, namely to find out whether the person should be asked to execute a bond or he should not be asked to execute a bond. He is neither convicted nor acquitted. Or during the, at the time when we dealt right from section 154 up to section 176, do I have reference to section 174? When the death of the person has taken place under suspicious circumstances, court will find, court will conduct an inquiry to find out as to what was the cause of the death. And this is generally done by executive magistrate, which is known as inquest, to find out cause of death, where the question, the, the, the court will not fix the liability, only court will come to the conclusion as to what is the, was, what was the cause of the death. And then, if you read section 176 accordingly, court will conduct an executive magistrate shall conduct an inquiry when the death of the person has taken place in the police custody. So there are various, I mean, or when the matter goes to, when the matter, the matter goes to the magistrate and then magistrate has decided to conduct an inquiry himself or has asked his deputy, uh, subordinate to conduct an inquiry to find out whether there is a prima facie case or not. Here also, he doesn't come to the conclusion regarding guilt or innocence of an accused person and hence this is exactly what is known by an inquiry. Generally, 
when we deal with the provisions of the criminal procedure code the first step is investigation the second is inquiry and ultimately in order to find out whether the person has committed an offense or not we proceed to the trial as per the provisions of the criminal procedure code with this now when we start dealing with trial before a court of session you have to refer to right from section 225 up to section 237 but let me make very clear at this point of time by merely reading right from section 225 up to section 237 it may not be possible for you to understand the trial in the real sense of the term and hence it is must for us to correlate many more sections during the course when we try to understand trial before a court of session there are some sections or there are many sections to which i shall be referring to at the time of dealing with the trial before a court of session and then during course when it is the trial of foreign case by magistrate or when it is the trial of a summons case or when it is a trial of summary trial the all i mean the provisions for example remain the same for example i mean the trial is always in order that everybody should have faith and confidence in the system of the administration of justice which is prevailing prevailing in the country every trial is always conducted in open court and now in order to know no such be it is irrespective of the trial whether it is a trial before a court of session or whether it is a tri trial of a warrant case pro trial is always conducted in open court for which you have to i mean if you refer section 327 which clearly lays down so section 327 is applicable irrespective of the nature of the trial it says court to be open and sub clause 1 says the place in which any criminal court is held for the purpose of inquiring into or trying any offence shall be deemed to be an open court to which the public generally may have access so far as the same can conveniently contain them provided that the presiding judge or magistrate may if he thinks fit order at any stage of any inquiry or the inquiry into or trial of any particular case that the public generally or any particular person shall not have access to or be or to remain in the room or building used by the court sub clause 2 says nothing not withstanding anything contained in sub section 1 the inquiry into and trial of rape of an offence under section 376 section 376 capital a section 376 capital b section 376 capital c or section 376 capital d of the indian penal code shall be conducted in camera where you do not allow public at large there but i mean that is as as per the clause provided further it says that the presiding judge may if he thinks fit or on an application made by either of the parties allow any particular person to have access to or to be or remain in the room or or building used by the court provided further that in camera trial shall be conducted as far as practicable by a woman judge or magistrate and sub clause 3 says where any proceedings are held under sub section 2 it shall not be lawful for any person to print or publish any matter in relation to any such proceeding except with the previous permission of the court provided that the ban on printing or publication of trial proceedings in relation to an offence of rape may be lifted subject to maintaining confidentiality of the name and address of the party so the trial shall always be in the open court as far as section 300 and 27 of the criminal procedure code is concerned irrespective of the nature of the trial now as we have started discussing with the trial before a court of session you will understand that matter never directly goes to the court of session for that the section that comes into operation is section 209 which says case is committed to the we have at the time when we dealt right from section 204 up to section 210 there we have learned a uh, cognizance of an offence is taken by the court of magistrate and when the magistrate is satisfied is of the opinion 
that the nature of the case is such which is triable by court of session. As per last vertical column of the first schedule of the criminal procedure court, what he will do? He will commit that case to the court of session as far as section 209 of the criminal procedure court is concerned. So the case will come before a court of session for the purpose of trial only as per section 209 barring only one exception and we shall be dealing with this exception at the time of discussing procedure which is laid down as far as the last section namely section 237 is concerned to be read with section 199 sub clause 2 when the offense is that of a defamation with respect to high dignitaries cognizance is directly taken by the court of session this is the only exception where cognizance of an offense is directly taken by the court of session otherwise in rest of the cases cognizance is taken by the magistrate and magistrate will send that send that case to the court which has got power to try as per the for, as per the provisions of the criminal procedure court so now this trial when we talk about trial section 225 says in every trial before a court of session, the prosecution shall be conducted by a public prosecutor. So now, in order to know who is public prosecutor, we have to refer to uh, refer to the chapter right from section 6 up to section 25A, various courts and offices, and section 24 deals, deals with what do you mean by public prosecutor or it gives detail regarding public prosecutor accordingly. And hence, you have a public prosecutor as far as trial before court of session is concerned, who is an advocate on behalf of the prosecution. Whereas, whenever the matter goes before a magistrate or the trial is conducted before magistrate, the advocate on behalf of the prosecution is assistant public prosecutor as dealt by, for which I mean you will have to have reference to section 25. So these are the uh, public prosecutor, section 24, assistant public prosecutor, section 25, as far as the criminal procedure code is concerned. So he shall be, the in every trial before a court of session, the prosecution shall be conducted by public prosecutor. Now whether he needs any authority, and the answer is in the indicative, for which you will have to refer to two sections. Please refer to section 301, and section 302 which will serve the purpose from the point of view of understanding as far as the pub public prosecutor is concerned and then if, it, <clears throat> if you go through section 301 it says appearance by public prosecutor and it says the public prosecutor or assistant public prosecutor in charge of a case may appear and plead without any written authority before any court in which that case is under inquiry, trial or appeal. Subclause 2 says, if in any such case any private person instructs a pleader to prosecute any person in any court, the public prosecutor or assistant public prosecutor in charge of the case shall conduct the prosecution and the pleader so instructed shall act therein under the directions of the public prosecutor or assistant public prosecutor and may with the permission of the court submit written arguments after the evidence is closed in the case. Now if you, along with this section 301 if you read section 302 it says permission to conduct prosecution. Any magistrate inquiring into or trying a case may permit the prosecution to be conducted by any person other than a police officer below the rank of inspector but no person other than an advocate general or government advocate or a public prosecutor or assistant public prosecutor shall be entitled to do so without such permission provided that no police officer shall be permitted to conduct the prosecution if he has taken part in the investigation into the offense with respect to which the accused is being prosecuted and subclause 2 says any person conducting the prosecution may, may do so for do so personally or by a pleader. So that is as far as the public public prosecutor is concerned or assistant public prosecutor is concerned. So for which I mean you will have to have reference to two sections namely section 301 and section 302 as far as the criminal procedure code is concerned. With this now when you refer accused person 
has got right to consult and to be defended by an advocate of his own choice and that is made very clear so you have you have i mean advocate on behalf of the prosecution now you should have an advocate it is because of the prince because of section 303 which says any person accused of an offence before a criminal court and against whom proceedings are instituted under this court may of right be defended by a pleader of his choice so accused person has got right to be defended by an advocate of his own choice as far as section 303 of the criminal procedure code is concerned now this is a situation there may be a situation where because of the financial difficulties it may not be possible for the accused person to engage an advocate to defend his case in a court of law but then we are guided by the by article 14 of the constitution law which speaks about equality before the law and equal protection of the law so when you have an advocate on behalf of the prosecution you must have an advocate on behalf of the defense and hence there is a provision which is let down as far as section 304 is concerned where in a trial before the court of session the accused is not represented by a pleader and where it appears to the court that the accused has not sufficient means to engage the pleader the court shall assign a pleader for his defense at the expense of the state so he accused person will have an advocate at the expenses of the state so that is i mean he you have an advocate on behalf of the defense as far as section namely section 303 if not then i mean as far as section 300 and four of the criminal criminal procedure code is concerned now with this now we come to an you you can conduct a trial and the court can can be said to have observed the principles of natural justice we only in a case where the trial is conducted in presence of an accused person now there are two possibilities the accused person in order to compel appearance of a accused person in a court of law court can follow the measures that that are that can be taken right from section 61 up to section 90 of the criminal procedure code namely summons warrant proclamation and attachment accordingly if the accused person was arrested and he was not released on a bail then naturally if you read right from section 266 up to section 271 of the criminal procedure code this is the chapter that makes mention how it is how court can give a direction when the accused person is in jail to bring him before the court of law at the time as far as the conduct of the trial is concerned because there cannot be a recording of the evidence in the absence of accused person because that will not be in the interest of, as far as the principles of natural justice are concerned namely right to hear and to be heard in other words the evidence which is against him which is required to be recorded in his presence and then he has also got right to, to of what is known as cross examination as per the provisions of the indian evidence act with which we shall be dealing during course of our time now so so accused person you remains present in the court of law and then you have an you have an advocate on behalf of the prosecution and you also have an advocate on behalf of the defense now there may be a situation where the accused person is present in a court of law no doubt about it but accused person is a person of unsound mind and when we talk about presence of the accused person it's not only physical presence of the accused person but it is also mental presence the accused must understand whatever going on in a court of law hence what happens if the accused person is a person of unsound mind now in order to i mean know this if you read right from section 328 up to section 339 of the criminal procedure code this deals with accused person of unsound mind now this is the case where the accused was a person of sound mind at the time when the offense was committed by him and now he becomes a person of unsound mind at the time of the trial because of which it may not be possible for him to defend his case in a court of law 
for that we have as i told you the chapter but the principle is very simple if the accused person is not in a position to understand the proceedings which are going on in a court of law because of his state of the mind namely when he has become a person of unsound mind the trial is adjourned or the trial is postponed and the regular procedure with which we shall be dealing during course of time when we refer to right from section 328 up to 339 where the trial is adjourned or postponed till he becomes a person of sound mind and then the procedure as to he is i mean required to be, there must be i mean his examination the doctor is required to be called his evidence is required to be deposited is dealt right from section 328 up to section 339 but otherwise if the accused person is present in a court of law then now naturally the case has come to the court of session and as the case has co co come to the court of the session before sessions court starts this uh, dealing with the trial the sessions court must get itself satisfied that all provisions are complied as per section 207 and we with which you are dealt in section 208 namely accused person is provided with a uh, copies of all the necessary documents because of which the case is leveled against him by the prosecution and then now after this now we start as far as next section is concerned in section 226 which says when the accused appears so he is now present or is brought before the court or he is i mean as per the directions which are given to the jail authorities as per section 266 up to 271 he is brought before the court in pursuance of a commitment of a case under section 209 the prosecutor shall open his case by describing the charge brought against the accused and stating by by what evidence he proposes to prove the guilt of the accused person so this is exactly the time where what is required to be done in court if upon consideration of the record of the case and the document submitted therewith and after hearing the submission of the accused and the prosecution in this via the judge considers that there is not sufficient ground for proceeding and hence what are the steps now the court has to hear the public prosecutor court has to hear the defense counsel the court now this is the time for me to draw your attention to one section namely section 313 sub clause 1 small a which deals with what court may ask any question to accused person without previously warning an accused person in order to give an opportunity to him to explain the case which is leveled against him by the prosecution and hence now this is examination power of the court to examine the accused person so the court will hear the prosecution court will hear the defense court will go through the record that is available with the court of law and in every inquiry or the trial for the purpose of enabling the accused personally to explain any circumstances appearing in the evidence against him the court may at any stage without previously warning the accused put such questions to him as the court considers necessary so this is section 313 one a which says the procedure that is required to follow and then now the judge considers that there is not sufficient ground for for proceeding what he will do against the accused he shall discharge the accused and record his reasons for so doing so that is the end of the trial if the judge considers that there is not sufficient ground for proceeding against the accused he shall discharge the accused and record his reasons for doing so so this is setting accused person free and which because of what because of the order of discharge now let me tell you during course of time when we shall be dealing with section 300 of the criminal procedure code which is based on the maxim atrophies acquit or atrophies convict mind well acquittal is setting person free discharging is setting person free but there is a clear cut distinction between 
uh, acquittal and discharge section 300 of the in criminal procedure code comes into operation only when the person is acquitted and not discharged so this is discharged and that is the end of the trial if i mean the court has passed an order by giving reasons as far as the discharge is concerned if not if not then what the court will do if after such consideration and hearing as i foresaid the judges of the opinion that there is a ground for presuming that the accused has committed an offence which is not exclusively triable by the court of session he may frame a charge against the accused and by order transfer the case for trial to the chief judicial magistrate or any other judicial magistrate of magistrate of the first class and direct the accused to appear before the chief judicial magistrate or as the case may be the judicial magistrate of the first class on such date as he deems fit and thereupon such magistrate shall try the offence in accordance with the procedure for the trial of foreign cases instituted on the police report and secondly if it is the offence is exclusively triable by court he shall frame in writing charge against the accused so this is the time where if the accused person is not discharged the court will undergo a stage of what is known as framing of the charge and court is guided by what when we dealt with charge i hope the court i mean uh, has to is guided by section 2 sub clause b which defines charge right from section 211 up to section 224 to be read with section 464 to be read with the the form number 32 as far as second schedule of the criminal procedure code is concerned so that is the what is done by the court of law court will undergo a stage of framing of a charge with this now once the charge is framed by the court of law what are the next steps that are required to be required to be taken is dealt as far as section 228 sub clause 2 onwards with which we shall continue our discussion as far as next part of our series of lecture is concerned